So hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm the coordinator for the Master of Architecture program. I'm really pleased to see you all here tonight. Uh, really happy to welcome you. Um, the MARC lecture series um, is a yearly lecture series that we host at SUTD. Um, it's meant to bring the world to our architecture students. Um, it's also meant to emphasize the centrality of sustainable design to our curriculum. It's part of the discussion that we have in each of these sessions. Um, additionally, this year we have um, uh, the theme Research Praxis. Um, each year we choose a new theme, and this year we're choosing to talk about innovation in the practice of architecture. We've invited some really interesting young practitioners to come in and share their story, how they got into practice, what they've done with their practice, how they've innovated and done things differently from those that came before. Um, and research is part of this story too. So this idea that we delve deeply into certain topics, we become experts, and with that knowledge, we define new projects for architecture, and we're able to um, redefine the value that architecture brings to our world. Right. Um, within this, uh, um, we've been able to bring uh, Usman Haq earlier. Uh, Calvin Schwa joined us, a uh, local architect. Uh, Chan Su Kian gave a lecture in June. In July, we had Kat Wong and Brian Young from Bjarke Ingels Group. And uh, today, uh, we're very happy to welcome uh, Chie Kono. So, if you'll bear with me for a moment, I'm going to do a, a quick introduction of our, of our guest. We're very, very honored uh, to welcome the architect Chie Kono. Um, she's the founder of the Tokyo-based architecture office, TechCo, um, which has designed award-winning projects throughout Japan, Asia, and Europe. She is associate professor at Kyoto Institute of Technology, KIT where her laboratory conducts urban and architectural research. Architect Kono specializes in the design of housing, welfare, and public facilities, where she seeks to create spaces that connect across so social structures and institutions. Um, she has made notable contributions in urban development and art installation. Um, her main works include the Kasugadai Center Center, which is uh, just recently the winner of the 2023 Architectural Institute of Japan Award. So this is a, a huge distinction, and we're really happy to celebrate with you today. Um, her design for Sunny Loja House was the winner of the 2012 Tokyo Society of Architects and Building Engineers uh, Residential Architectural Gro Gold Prize, and also the 2014 Architecture Institute of Japan Award for New Designer of the Year. Um, architect Kono holds a PhD from the Tokyo Institute of Technology and she has also studied at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. So with that, uh, could you join me uh, with a big round of applause for uh, Architect Kono? Thank you. Okay, so good evening. 
I'm very happy to be invited to this opportunity. Thank you for coming today. And today I want to talk about the title, uh, Biological Commons. I have not been able to define this word uh, clearly, but I think it is a very important phrase for me at this moment based on what we have been thinking about and also the architecture we have made until now. So first, I, I want to show you or share this slide. This is the view of center of Tokyo. And Japan has enlarged its cities in the process of modernization and uh, rapid economic growth. Tokyo's inner city area has a, a big population of over 10 million people and it's still growing and growing. And also, still now, 20 skyscrapers over 100 meter high being built per year. Then we, I want to share with uh, this population demog demographics. The, this shows the population peaked in 2004 in Japan. Here. <coughs> then now it's in decline. But also this huge population is just after the World War II, like just 100 years. Then it, it was kind of, I, I could say, abnormal 100 years. So we have to think about what's, what's going on this next 100 year or 50 year or something. And also I'm showing the ratio of uh, elderly people over 65 years. Now it's about 29%, about 30%. So around uh, 2030, it's almost one in three people will be aged 65 or over. So next, I want to show you the elderly people's how how yeah the the change of demographic from 1960s to 2050. It's uh, yeah. Yes, and uh, as you see, after the World War II, the population needs grow. Then also the chart below shows m how many people in the productive population are supporting one elderly person. This here in 60s, almost 11 people supported one elderly person, but today almost two people need to support one elderly people. And 30 years later, it's this and this. And yeah, it shows, I think it shows that we need to shift the thinking of uh, what is support and supported system or who is the productive people or this kind of things. And this shows the comparison with uh, Japan and Singapore. The peak shape is a little bit different, but almost we have sharing the similar situation. Yes. Then in this situation, I think we need to think about our own living environment and not just rely on the government. I would, do, I would like to structure our commons of the future as one of the way of dealing with this kind of subject or problem. Then I want to show, I want to talk about the commons, the, the idea of commons. Originally, commons is a piece of land or spaces that belongs to everyone in the community. For example, pastures or fishing ground and waterways, 
which are basically linked with natural resources. Then in 16, ah, no, sorry, 1968, Garrett Hardin argues about the commons with the article tragedy of the commons. He said that the time, yeah, the time when the commons works well were very happy, people were happy. But the population growth and the maximization of industrial profit have led to this kind of common resources being exhausted. Then this, this argument has led to discussion to on um, different ways of perceiving the commons. And also I'm thinking now what is uh, our commons for the future. So to consider this kind of different perspective perspectives. I am working back and forth architectural design and research. Yes, I want to show you the research part first. Uh, this, I, I, I started this research in 2007. I'd like to talk about this Lodja space research. Of course, I'm now belonging or teaching at university as well, so we have so many topics or theme. But for about this Lodja space, I continue uh, like 15 years already. Then I actually, I started these topics when I was in master course in university. So the Originally, loggia is the word in Italy, the roof space with the column and uh, yeah, strong roof, and then it's defined by this kind of architecture element, and also people are very enjoying in Italy in this loggia space. So I really like this space, the strongness of this space, which which was built in the Renaissance era, but still very activated in the contemporary situation or social situation. Then the people who are living, who are using this space, looks always very happy and <laughs> very vivid and bite with the vitality. So I really want to think how ar architects can make this kind of strong space, not, uh, yeah, mm, mm, yes, <laughs> yes. Then well, one of the most favorite semi-open space in the world is this photo. Uh, it's, uh, it's not called as a uh, loggia, it's called as Pati in Bhaktapur, Nepal. And this party, a semi-open space, is uh, made by brick base and walls and the wooden roof with wooden kram. And as you see this photo, you can see so many people are enjoying this space. And um, they are very, they, they look like very relaxing. Like one people is reading newspaper and one is chat, just chatting. Sometimes they are doing something, knitting or <laughs> this small child and grandma, grandfather looks no, not related by blood, but very relaxing together. And when I saw this, landscape, I thought in, in Japan, for example, the government is always trying to support coexistence and multi-generation exchange through institution or regulation or law somehow, or yes, this kind of thing. But I, feel, I felt that the presence of this kind of space in the cities naturally helps to link the activities beyond the generation. And I felt that there is still so many things to do 
in architecture, or that, or there is many things that we can do for to make this kind of landscape. So, <coughs> yeah, this is another example in Bakhtapu. There are many people always here. Then this is actually situated in the uh, town square. Uh, in Bakhtapu, they, they have so many square, but not like large empty square, but open sp um, open square, but often together with large well, like this. Then at the bottom, they have the water. Yeah, the, it depends on the season. It comes up like this, or the, when they lack with the water, it's very low water. And then, yes, they are using as a daily life, for daily life. And also they have this here, the light side is the Buddhism temple, and here is the Hindu temple. So people coming to square use the water and to pray here and just rest for a moment in the party on, on this photo. Yes, so here you can see the people gathering here and uh, he is doing his work as a sewing shop. <laughs> so various people help to maintain this space in whatever way they, they can do. Then some, sometimes people are cleaning here and some light the candle and some provide material during the restoration. Some do restoration work. Each member finds his or her way, her role to take part in maintaining this place in the town. So I thought this kind of thinking is very important to to think about what is the common space or how we can maintain or. Uh, how we can keep this kind of common space together with other people, except house or family or the working people. So it's really interesting example. Yes, so I made research around the world in about loggia space in vernacular architecture. So this map showing the city's travel for this 15 years. And for example, this is a loggia. Uh, we call it city loggia. Here is a loggia with a stone and uh, yes, the, they have the pillar. And then this this town is called Groznyan. It's very small village, and they have uh, the city wall like this. So in the entrance gate here, they have city lodger, and outside of this city gate, they have church lodger, we call it. Then always when the visitors come into the village, they, they, they provide this space that everyone can use or every can, everyone can list here in the entrance. So I really like this kind of thinking. So I, we went to many countries and measured up and interviewed so many things. Then uh, we are now editing one book for all over the world, Lodja kind space. So yes, it's always very related to their daily life and culture behavior. And this is Bale Banja. Uh, Bale is the unit of community in Bali, Indonesia. Then they have this kind of big roof space, but very open to the public and open to the air. And when we visit there, they have uh, preparation for the festival. So everyone is gathering here and making something. Then, yeah, it, it's very interesting time and space. And almost 
50 families are belonging to this Palebanjao, then yeah, it depends on the uh, community, but almost it's average 50 to 100 families are belonging to Palebanjao. So they are sharing how to manage their festival and also how to decide things for the community, this kind of thing. So <coughs> yes, it's very open space and the kitchen is the beside building. Uh, yes, there. and also the facility inside of this, this Palebanja is depends on the community. Some community is very focused on kitchen and some is very focused in stage with the uh, instruments or this kind of things. So we can see so many different culture in Bale Panjal as well as well. Yes, was like this. Then through this research, the I uh, we I always want to try to make this kind of semi open space or the lodge space to my practical work. Then at the big I graduated 2011 so I I established my own office 2011 just after my graduation PhD then from the beginning I always try to make this lodge space so at the first work was the housing pro housing project detached house project which is my mother and sister's house <laughs> it was uh, e easier to do these <laughs> things that I wanted to do something related to my thinking. So this Sunny Lodge House is uh, situated in Kanagawa. And yes, Kanagawa is next to Tokyo and about 30 kilometers from the center of Tokyo. And it's Sagamihara city. It's kind of bed town of Tokyo. So everyone is going to the center of Tokyo and come back to this town and the strip and this kind of space or the town. Then this site is uh, very close to the train line. And also there is a industrial block and also American military base here and then the elementary school and the site is here. So this this yeah in Japan we normally own the land, own the plot and own the individual house. It's yeah I, I, if you look at the uh, even if in the center of Tokyo it's very very there there are so many detached house. So basically they want to own their own house. Then this area is uh, developed in 50s and basically the plot size is 150 square meter. And now still it's subdivided to two and three plots. Then the house become smaller and smaller. But this yeah, my family decided not to divide, subdivide the plot, so that we used the uh, whole the sites like this, and street is here and here, and I decided the south part is for garden, and the north part is for house, and I made it, made the loggia in the center of the site, and uh, this loggia connecting everything, like living room and kitchen, dining, and tatami room is my mother's room and uh, bathroom, and et cetera. And uh, yes, then also the second floor, we, uh, the loggia has a two-story high. So the room, main bedroom and the sub-bedroom and mattress room is facing to the loggia and garden and we can see the street as well. Then sec sectional perspective is like this. So Lodger has the two story high, about four, mm, five meter <laughs> the ceiling height. And uh, all the rooms are facing to 
to Roger with different windows. So we can see different behavior through the window from the Roger side or the garden side. And yes, so family's activity comes together in three-dimensional way here. And this is the photo from outside. Yes, I made the large opening in the loggia like this. So huge opening. So that all internal spaces could have access and views to the garden through the loggia and the street, we can see. Then the garden is planted with trees such as maple and fig and so on. And uh, which, yeah, which was before in the garden of old house. So, yes, this is the elevation from the south where the garden is located. And the uh, loggia occupies the almost all of the south facade and south elevation. And windows of various opening can is collected to this space. And yes, the loggia has the character of room rather than just connecting the garden, but they have low wall and uh, the wall from the top. So yes, this space, I, I try to make this space as a kind of room not like just uh, open space. But to make like this, it's kind of like we, we believe somehow, or we can do, do um, from, we can do, or we can stay here in lift atmosphere, I think, so. When I my mother when my mother is here, for example, the local people or the neighbors are coming from the garden and talk to her, and uh, this kind of conversation is happening in this loggia. Yes, and also from the rooms inside, you can see the outside, and uh, yes, this terracotta tile is making the circulation in the ground floor. And yes, so yes, this is the opposite side. This is the corner of the house. We put the piano here and dining and living, very small living room. <laughs> and this is the tatami room and the uh, the piano here and circulation is like this. So in this circulation, you can see the dark place and brighter space and low ceiling and high ceiling and different kind of atmosphere is in this one circulation. And also in the second floor, you can see the loggia with this balcony. And if you go to the balcony, you can feel very close to the leaves of the garden. And you can feel the city street atmosphere as well. And this is a smaller bedroom with a mattress room. And this window is uh, in, um, yes, in inwards opening, then you can, we, we didn't, didn't make any crumbs here, so you can see very close the loggia and garden and the streets like this. Then in the evening, the lighting making this space. <coughs> yes, and then making the loggia space like a lighting volume. And then from the street, loggia is Loggia with the pulling light are uh, creating another form of house like this. This angle is the same as the uh, roof angle, so this shows up like uh, another house. But it, it looks like the lamp for, for the town at the same time. 
So to do this kind of uh, practice, we always try to think about uh, people's life or the behavior together with the outdoor environment or the local community. Then next one is uh, my office. Next project is my office. This is also really clear example that we are doing this um, experiment experiment. Then it's in Asakusabashi in Tokyo, close to Tokyo Station. And we are sharing this uh, building together with uh, young architects, Hiroyuki, Hiroyuki Unemori, and which is uh, the same generation and very famous architect. And yes, the building is like this. It was used as office, and uh, sometimes they they used the uh, basement uh, ground floor as car parking, but we all renovated this building. <coughs> and then, actually, this this is completed in 2020. It means the beginning of COVID. Then, my generation started to release their office. They just uh, quit the, <laughs> the uh, contract for the room. Then they started just online or, yeah, some of my friends started like this. But we talked and discussed so much. Then let's talk, uh, what's, what's the physical, physi what? the importance of physical office or physical space or what we can share in the physical office. Then we made so many ideas and uh, it took time, but <laughs> we finally def uh, decided that like this. We made uh, office. Teko is uh, my office floor and Unemori is both floor. So we, we made the limitation of the individual office floor, but make the share floor as much as possible. Then first floor, we call it square. It's We, we made uh, the bigger opening to the street, so it could be used by community people as, as like a uh, square. And on the second floor, we removed the fitting window, then we call it garden. Because in this town, there are so many other, the building is very um, full stand. <laughs> How can I say? They, they don't have so many vacant space or the garden, or they, there are not so many parks in this town. So we, we thought we need some fresh air or to rest in their working time. So we, t we decided the second floor could be the garden. Then the fifth floor is the library, uh, sharing the magazine and the books, everything, and the sky we have. So the washroom, bathroom, we have only one uh, first floor and second floor and sky, sixth floor. So we have to when we, we want to go to when we want to go to toilet, we we have to move the floor and floor. So it this was our concept. Then we we thought, yeah, we we are we are very enjoying the sharing this this kind of space and the meeting is very. Mm, fresh always, we have to move floor and floor. And uh, yes, we activate this uh, whole building through, the, through our movement. So this is the first floor. We open the, we put new big window, wooden window, wooden slide window, so we can open completely this building. And this is the second floor. We don't have any grass here, so we try to 
put vinyl curtain and sometimes we we have shadow curtain and <laughs> we we had so many experiments here. And also here is a takeoff floor and here is Nemori's floor and here is library. When you come up to fifth floor in the library you can you cannot feel so much um, noisy sound if you compare to first floor. There is no car beside here, so people can concentrate on their work. So I really like to work here, actually. And a little bit, uh, the, yes, and the neighbors are lower than our building, so the wind comes through in the fifth floor. So the condition is very different from each floor. And then here, n now I want to, uh, I yes, I want to show the extra version of our building. Our building called base, but when we use plus base, we we try to do something different besides architecture office. So we wanted to manage the common space like this. So. We try to find some cafe, for example, like this. Open the the one day chef cafe, for example, and uh, talk event with talk plus space. We invite one people and uh, we open this talk event to their neighbors as well. And the gallery illustration Artist has made the uh, exhibition here and photo gallery as well and uh, <coughs> the festival like this. Yes, this after three years of uh, cancellation, the festival was finally done, held in this year. Yes. <laughs> so many people. <laughs> So we are very enjoying this space and we are do always trying to do something to communicate with uh, local people or how to manage this kind of space uh, with this base building. So it th this is because uh, when we started the discussion for this building, we we I and Teko and Unemoli is uh, working together for public building. In planning for the public building, we always propose the this kind of open space to the uh, government or the city government. But uh, actually, it's very hard to manage and hard to keep this kind of space so so that's why we thought we need to try by ourselves <laughs> so we do these things and we have so many trouble <laughs> and uh, problem as well but uh, we are enjoying how somehow to deal with this kind of problem yes and the uh, next two project is uh, care project. Now, yeah, the first work for the care facility, we started in 2013, so it's about 10 years already. Then we, we've done more than 10 works for the care facility, but yes, always we learn so much from through, uh, through this care building or care architecture. And then, yes, the next one is uh, this project to renovate the garden of uh, elderly home, Minowa home. A home, this, this home is for 80, about 80 elderly people, which was built 30 years ago. And this Minowa, the garden, Minowa home, 
the elderly home is also located in Kanagawa. I have so many projects in Kanagawa, actually. Then it's uh, about 40 kilometers from Shinjuku station. And, but there are no railway in, the, in this town. This is situated in Aikawa town. They don't have any train railway line. And we can see the rapidly shrinking suburban area. Then Aikawa town is, uh, yeah, yes, it is like this. And they have uh, two very beautiful rivers, Sagamigawa and uh, Nakatsugawa. And they have a hill here. So they have very um, beautiful vegetation area. And also up the hill, they have residential and some industrial area like this. And the population is 40,000, and the uh, aging rate is more than 30%. And also, this, yeah, if you compare it to Singapore, it's very low. But <laughs> in, in Japan, foreign ratio 7.4% uh, is very high. It's the highest in the Kanagawa prefecture. And uh, yeah, this is really beautiful rice field and the same time on the top of hill they have a large industrial area and also the residential which is supporting this industrial area and very close to this industrial area uh, the Minoa home is situated and this building is two-story RC building and approximately 2,000 square meter and the facility was were closed by the city to the city with this strong wall like uh, on the boundary uh, site boundary and the high uh, 1.4 meter high and 80 meter long wall so it looks like very closed and then when i first went there this this home and I I try to do drive with foil chair. Then I couldn't see anything from the he the street sidewalk. Then I I was really kind of shocked with this scenery. Then but yes, but their their care is very. How can I say the 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 caregiver works so mm, energetic, and they are always looks very happy with a smile, and uh, I think they are really enjoying their works, or they are very proud of this work. But um, yes, but I think the thirty years old building doesn't have. Uh, Mm, good connection with their activity, or it's something, something, some distance in their activity and the physical environment. But uh, the pe people, uh, people in this local people, really like this home. Then they have uh, one of the biggest festival in in this town. This, yeah, this elderly home is running, running by, run by social welfare corporation. Then they, they are planning every year this kind of big festival, and neighbors are really rely on their activities. So we, when we talk with uh, the chief of this company, oh yes, organization. We, we thought we need to think about how to connect with the community in daily life. Yes. So the plan is like this, the huge building here. So we just focused on this front yard, front garden, and uh, we decided to remove this wall and iron door 
here. And here is the sidewalk. So we thought that they could be the one big garden together with the sidewalk. And we, we can find some new axis for the town, like dealing with uh, town plot. So we, we planned this kind of garden planning with many seating, the benches and uh, this kind of space. Then make it along this axis. So here is the dining, here is the kamado, which is fireplace, the kitchen. When you take off this uh, wood panel, you can use here as a kamado and the flower bed and porch and also edible wall here and here it's a vegetable garden and the people who who are sitting hoyer chair is also joined to the vegetation it, because it's a raised up uh, vegetable garden so when they finish this planning and also cost estimation yes Let's start, we thought. But this, when we, when we prepared, <laughs> the, this accident happened. Yeah, 19 disability people were killed very close to this home. Then, yes, yeah, so many people are very worrying about this plan. Yeah, it's of course very, <laughs> very, uh, yes, it, I can un understand what they're saying. And the resident's family and the staff, caregiver, also are very worry, worrying about this planning project. And also the government uh, informed them to install security camera and strengthen the security and also set up, they set up the subsidies. But if we g gave, up, gave up this opening the garden, the owner thought that we cannot, we can never connect with the local people or we cannot change this environment. So they, or the one, one guy, who is uh, the chief of this corporation, decided to break down this wall. <laughs> it's just uh, three weeks later the, from the accident. Then it, it was uh, actually kind of performance to the public or to the town. Then they, yes, it's, can you see that it's the wooden we're doing hammer, it's very weak, so we cannot <laughs> break down this wall, RC wall, but uh, it's the, uh, for him or for them, it, the performance was really important that they remove this barrier, uh, which is separated the home to the street or the town. So all, almost all of the staff and the family of the residents and me, <laughs> we everyone try to make this hammer, and but it doesn't change. <laughs> Just uh, the surface is <laughs> broken. But then the finery we we demolish with uh, heavy machinery. Yes, <laughs> yes. Then after the construction, we we really change this scenery. So the people who walked here before comes inside of the garden now. So it's completely open to the townscape. And also the habitants never come up to the garden, but now they are using this Pagra area. And also it's the laundry drying Every day they are doing this laundry, mm. yes. And here is raised garden, so for your people is also jo joining to the vegetation, the plants. Yes, 
they're, I think they're really enjoying this space. And also in the in the period of COVID, the the family can meet the residents in the garden because they cannot enter the building, but in the garden they allow to see each other. So it was really important space for them to communicate with the family as well. And sometimes they sit on the board <laughs> and uh, having girls talk here. And the children from the neighbor nursery is coming here every day to use this space. So through this project, we learned a lot, and we we and yes, and yeah, this this cooperation. Uh, I think they are very brave, and they don't have a look on the door. They always allow people to go out and communicate with the local people, and then gradually they run how to manage this kind of environment. So finally, we I will show you the project Kasugadai Center Center, but actually this project is the same client as the Minowata Garden. Through these uh, many experimental project, we, because of this project before, we could this project Kasugadai Center Center. It was uh, completed in one uh, one years before, one year ago, uh, 2022. Yes, and the Minowada Garden is here, uh, up hill, and here the river, and here the river, and Kasugadai Center Center is just uh, five eight minutes walk from Minowada Garden. And Kasugadai Center Center is almost the center of Kasugadai housing area, which is prepared or developed for this industrial area in 1968 to 69. And then, yes. Then, actually, when I visit at the first time in Aikawa town, it was 2015, before Minowada Garden. The client asked me to do renovation of one of these townhouse shop place, space to make their uh, office for care visiting. Then visiting home care. How can I say yes? Then. Then we, we thought, we looked at the building and also walked around and yes, it was a very good atmosphere with many children and with the big symbol tree, but many shuttered shops here. So uh, we made so many interviews to the local people and also we went to this supermarket with waving shape roof. Then this is Kasugadai Center, the supermarket. When we went there, here, the owner of this supermarket told us that we, they want to close this supermarket because the big shopping center is uh, open very close to them. Then the Yes, it's too, It's very hard to keep these shops, she said. But uh, we thought many children uh, experience this experience to first shopping in this supermarket, like uh, sweets and the coloque, croquet in, in this supermarket. So. For us, it was obvious that this supermarket is very important for local people. But after four months, this interview, they closed. Then when the shop closed, the 
grass where it looks very mm, dangerous, so they they put the blind wooden panel, and also they put the camera to see the situation, and they removed the vending machine, and they put uh, the paper with forbidden something. <laughs> then, of course, the children disappear. Then I thought, this is the decline of the suburbia area. So I and the client discussed so many things. Then we thought that it's not not any more efficient to to make uh, one renovation of uh, a small shop, but we have to think about what is their needs for this community or what is the essential things for this Kasugadai residential area. So we started this workshop, Aikawa Living Laboratory. We call it Airabo. And then we made a poster and to 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 say something that we we let's think about uh, this town to to keep the life in ten years or twenty years. Then the workshop began with uh, fifteen people or twenty people, and then gradually it's uh, forty people and fifty people. And we sometimes we made a festival together with uh, elderly and children. And yeah, in this festival, there are more than 40, 100 residents gathered to this festival. So we confirmed that uh, still they are here, <laughs> but they don't come up, show up. So we, we thought we, we have to do something here. So yeah, for example, this discussion through this supermarket. So at the beginning of this workshop, we 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 were kind of lost the way <laughs> what to do, but uh, we try. I tried to find my love in this iLabo workshop, so I tried to make uh, this newspaper through the workshop. I just uh, archiving their talk and the fact that we cannot see in the town history or something. So it, through this workshop, we found some kind of real texture of this town. For example, they have, uh, they, the young people are gathering in the coin laundry because they, they, in this town, they don't have any beautiful cafe, but they, the coin laundry is uh, very clean, 24 hour open and free and air conditioned <laughs> and it's perfect so through this kind of discussion we understand what uh, what the uh, icara town and yes and what the uh, essential needs and also the second generation of uh, workers for industrial area is uh, foreign people that's why the ratio of foreign people is foreign residents is high in this town then the children of this worker is uh, does having have this uh, problem in the school that they cannot understand Japanese, so they cannot go to the school anymore. The, so one one of the elderly women started the studying class for them, but they, but she doesn't have any. Uh, collaborator. So they, we we discuss these kind of things, or yeah, whatever they have in in mind. So this this workshop is uh, not prepared for building or the building project, but just the meeting place or, or discussion discussion. Praise, so they they are gathering very um, 
the people are very motivated to gather and they have their own uh, own eto opinion by themselves so it was really interesting so through this uh, discussion we thought we i and try and try to find the framework for this new place or new uh, mm, community space so we tried many kind of idea and uh, make it the perspective and models and plan and then we brought to the government and also the owner of the land and uh, we negotiate so many times so it takes uh, more than three years before starting basic planning concept design so during these three years we made so many workshops like this and then gradually it's the we found a way to do some project then after three four years we decided uh, seven programs for this Kasugadai center center uh, one is a group home for dementia people and the second one is multifunctional elderly care and uh, daycare and short stay and home visit combination service and also daycare for disabled children and coin laundry and wash and fold service and croquet cafe and uh, this is uh, also related to the employment support for disabled people and um, study room and common room is open to everyone the public the neighbor then together with this seven program we call it Kasugadai Center Center because we want to try to centralize this space from the Kasugadai Center supermarket so the name is uh, collect with two center Kasugadai Center Center and then finally we made the uh, planning and uh, this is the situation plan and there are so many park surrounding here this residential area so we made a uh, strong access to the park like this and also we if you make the big one building with seven program it's easier to manage for the company but for the for the organization but we decided to treat very important to treat these, these kind of town axis very important then we make a street in the volume so we divided three volumes like this and this Blue line is the leased land, and this red line is town-owned land. So we hang the roof over the town land as well. So it takes also one year to negotiate to using this space. So the finally, the uh, volume is like this, one volume and second and third volume, and they have the street access and the roof is continuous from the shopping area, like this. And uh, you can see one, two, three building here, and uh, the axis is going to the park. And this is the plan. And this is a group home, and this is day daycare for disab dis disability people, uh, children, and here is the daycare. And here is also daycare. And here is croquet cafe. And uh, here is coin laundry and wash and food service. And this here and here, the disability people is working as well. And through this three volume, we made the uh, Doma Street, which is uh, connecting to each other with the pavement finishing. So now there are so many people are gathering here and children to elderly people. You can see the townscape between the volumes. And you can see, oh, 
you can see the Doma Street through the volume. The here is a group home, and here is a daycare for disability children. And if you go uh, backwards to the uh, promenade, it's a little calm and a little bit dark. And uh, in the promenade, there are so many children in the daytime. They actually here is the care facility space, but they don't know about this fact. <laughs> so they always coming here and enjoying and having their homework here and chatting and gaming, etc. Like this. And they have, uh, we, we put the void to the second floor so we can feel the atmosphere of upper floor. And in here is tatami room. There, the children likes very much for this uh, of this space. So and and when we looked at this space, they they started to manage by themselves. There, there, you can see there's no paper, forbidden paper. What is forbidden? This is forbidden. This kind of paper they really hate. <laughs> this organization hate this kind of paper. So they try to people think or they rely on these local people as well. So they started how to share the space. It's really interesting thing. And also here, the when you a little back, to the promenade, you can see in the distance the praying children and uh, noisy things. <laughs> and Crockett Stan is here, and uh, Coin Landry, and Demetria Edery, who is living the group home, is coming to the laundry, etc. They have, uh, they are always looking for their own space in every day, so they move. They they are very allowed to move, so they always moving and finding their own space. And this is the second floor, and group home, and the common rooms with kitchen and fireplace, and this is study room. And this is section. The symbol tree and the promenade is here, and here is the residential area. So gradually, it's getting darker, and the ceiling is lower, and the individual room is situated in close to the residential area. And uh, we try to use as much as possible the natural light and the uh, natural ventilation. It's the second floor. We can feel the first floor atmosphere through the sound. And finally, I show you the movie for this space. It's the <laughs> last movie. have this kind of ceremony when we make the frame with the framework.
Tokyo people is living here, so the morning is very calm and the afternoon is、uh, gradually together with the children, very activated and it changed a lot in Thank you so much for <laughs> presentation. Thank you.